Greetings, beloved. Welcome, new subscribers. Hi, subscribers. Thank you for liking, sharing our video. Welcome to the Chemistry Channel. My name is Miss Penny. Thank you. We've covered a lot on this channel. This historical, historical events that impacted us humanity that impacted humanity and women and, and our spiritual practices so we see how all of that is connected I've connected basic dots for you so you can understand what has happened to us and the healing journey that we're on right now we're all on this healing journey together now you know to help me understand my practice and working with spirit, because that's what really it is. We're working with spirit when we go back to doing ancestral work, when we go back to our original uh, spiritual practices. When we go back to that, for me, it has been shamanic journeying, shamanic practices. I've had to go within and do the healing work to gain a lot of this insight. The more I learned about myself, the more I learned about uh, the ancestors, my ancestors that walked up on this planet. And I want to share that with you, diving deeper in that so you can access your own innate intuitive abilities as well. This is conjure. This is, this is the ancient practice of our ancestors. We all have it inside of us. Especially if you're indigenous, you still, you still have a lot of that information inside of you. But how do we access it? How do we trust it? How do we trust that? Uh, first, you know, like I've always emphasized and recommended, heal. Heal and you'll start accessing all sorts of information. Unpack some of these programmings. And you will unpeel a lot of information. But today I'm going to talk about shamanic practices and how to dive into your own psychology to dive into your own altered states of consciousness, knowing how to access the spiritual realm through your own mind. Because it's there. You have a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere in your brain. It is the spiritual realm that is creating this physical reality that is not real, that you, your ego, has told you that it is real, but it is not. In fact, it's all existing through consciousness. And we're going to get back to the real thing of who we are, who we truly are. This is where the power is. This is where your true magic is. When you learn that you are not your body. I had talked to the Divine Feminine last uh, the other night. I was in meditation with the Divine Feminine. And um, I was like, I'm feeling like I have insecurities. I feel like, you know, sometimes I'm not enough. And in that meditation, she said, oh, you don't see yourself. I said, excuse me? She said, you do not see yourself. You keep your ego keeps looking at your body. And she took my body away so I could see my true essence. A light being, a solar being, energy, just energy. That's all she let me see. And she said, from now on, when you come see me, do not come see me in your physical body because that's not you. That's not you. That's not your true essence. So learning how to tap in to that reality, because it's real. 
and to pull information out of it for healing or whatever you want to use it for your magic I'm gonna go over our shamanic shaman practices shaman journeying we're gonna go over this again because it's important it's the core of your practices initiating communication with spirit so let's dive in here now okay so we need to know what shamanic is I want to break this all the way down this is going to be a very detailed video because I want you to understand exactly how old it is and how accessible it is to everyone okay to everyone understanding your mind your psychology you've been doing your healing work you're understanding more about psychology you're understanding more about how your mind works and how you communicate with spirit all this is consciousness all of this is consciousness so let's go uh this article is talking about shamanic journeying. You can do your own research. This is some of my research here. Okay, if you're looking for a deeper understanding, listen to what it says. Have you ever felt disconnected from spirituality or searching for a deeper understanding of yourself and the world around you? Shamanic journeying may be just the tool you need to embark on a journey of self-discovery and connect with the spiritual realms. But what exactly is shamanic journey? What does what uh, what does it work? And how can you get started? Okay, we're gonna explore some basic shamanic uh, shamanic journeying, the origins, the benefits, uh, and maybe some step by step techniques for practices. Okay. When it comes to exploring your consciousness and spirituality, did you hear that? Are you looking at that? When it comes to exploring oneness, consciousness, and spirituality, there are a plethora of practices, methods to choose from. One such practice has stood the test of times and continues to intrigue people to this day is shamanic journeying. The ancient technique involves entering a trance-like state in order to connect with the spiritual realm and obtain guidance from the Bolivian spirits. But what exactly is shamanic journey and how does it work? Let's delve deeper into the definition and the origins. Shamanic journeying is an ancient practice that has been used in indigenous cultures around the world for centuries to connect with the spiritual realm. Okay, how many are you doing visualization? How many of you are truly meditating? How many are you using meditation for healing work? How many are you truly using the power of your mind to heal yourself? Here are some definitions and origins of shamanic journey. Shamanism is, is a ancient practice that involves connecting with the spiritual realm through altered states of consciousness. Now, I've talked about this. We talked about ayahuasca. We talked about using uh, plants, psychedelic plants, to go into altered states of consciousness. I've often said that the altered state of consciousness is, you know, what if the altered state of consciousness was the true reality? And what if the people who don't alter their consciousness what if they live in a fake life? Because people that can go into altered states of consciousness very easily or be able to see things, uh, they're able to connect with the spiritual realm easily. That goes for people that's into art, into music. They're always connected with the spiritual realm. They're in a, a sort of altered state of consciousness when they go into that. 
even when you're doing art, when you're practicing music, you're using another part of your brain. You're using the spiritual part of your brain. Shamanic journeying is specific shamanic technique that involves entering into a trance state to explore the spiritual realm. The origins, shamanic journeying originated in indigenous cultures around the world. Native American, African, Siberian cultures, shamans were regarded as the spiritual leaders and healers who would communicate with the spirit world to gain insight and wisdom. The practice of shamanic journey typically involves the use of drum or other rhythmic instrument to induce a trance state. The shaman then travels to the spiritual realm to seek guidance, wisdom, and healing. In many cultures, shamanic journeying is seen as a way to connect with one's ancestors and to receive guidance from them. Did you hear that? The shaman then travels in the spiritual realm to seek guidance, wisdom, and healing. In many cultures, shamanic journey is seen as the way to connect with one's ancestors and to receive guidance from them. You want to communicate with your ancestors. You want to do it in a way that is safe. You can always travel to that realm. And the key to this is having a memory. You can set up a memory, an intention to go there. And there is a basic map because all shamans have experienced, have a sort of same experience. You have the upper world, you have the middle world, and you have the lower world. And all of them have some type of medicine to provide to you. Now, the upper world is where you would find those more deified ancestors, more like angelic beings. And you can go beyond with the guides, with those ancestral guides. Which I'll talk about that later in another video. Shamanic journeying is a powerful practice that allows individuals to gain access to wisdom guidance of the spiritual realm. It can be, be a transformative experience that helps individuals to connect with their true selves and to gain insight into their lives. You understand that? That's why I'm so big on healing. A lot of people want to gain a lot of information and learn so much about this spiritual journey, but most of it is going to come from you accessing all this information within yourself. How does it work? Shamanic journey is a powerful technique that can open the door to the spirit realm and allow for deep personal transformation. It works by altering the brain waves of the journeyer to facilitate a state of expanded awareness that allows them to interact with spirit guides, receive insights, and learn important lessons. This is what our and this is our first form of psychology that our ancestors used when they healed themselves. You'll see that a little bit in hoodoo with the spiritual baths, some of the spiritual remedies. Same thing. Same thing. How do they work? Again, we're trying to shift. That's what an altar is for. When you have an altar in your house, when you have an altar, it's all, all the same thing. An altar shifts the brain waves, the altar states of consciousness. Shamanic journey involves slowing down the normal waking better brain waves and enter into a deeper alpha theta brain wave state. We can do that through meditation. This shift allows the journeyer, you, to access the subconscious and connect with the other realms of consciousness. If I said the spiritual realm, you want to understand this. This is what I've been talking about with patriarchy. 
they have been playing with your mind your spirit okay so you have to go in to this consciousness other realms of consciousness and gain your healing and your sanity that is the real world this one right here is artificial this is why they want you you one month to open your portal again your portal because you can manifest it in the physical realm you have always had the power but you can also go back in there and talk to those ancient ancestors and they'll tell you those ancestors tell you this ain't a safe place right now until the divine feminine do some healing I had to put that in there. I'm sorry. I had to put that in there. Spirit helpers. Spirit helpers. Once in the altered state of consciousness. Again, we're going back to altered state of consciousness. We've talked about how important the altar end is because it shifts the energy and it shifts your consciousness so you can communicate with spirit. The journey or you can communicate with the spirit helpers like power animals, ancestors, and angels. These helpers are believed to have access to vast knowledge and wisdom that can assist the journey or you in gaining greater understanding and insight. Sometimes the spirit realm, the spirit realm often communicates in symbolic language, which may appear to the journey journeyer in the form of metaphors, images, or other sensory experiences. You'll get images that pop in your mind. You might get a memory that you didn't remember anymore that makes sense right then and there. These symbols can be interpreted to reveal deeper, deep insights into you, the journeyer's personal path, purpose, and potential. Okay, this is your innate ability. And this takes some letting go. When I first began to journey, I studied on the subject for a long time. Looking at my psychology, I had already been doing the healing work, and I was using, wanted to use it too for more healing work, which I have done. I've put a lot of meditations down there, visual meditations. And you can do it. I did it because that was my intention. Integration upon returning from the journey, you, the journeyer, is encouraged to integrate their part experience into their daily life. This can involve reflecting on the insights received, journaling about the journey, or simply allowing the experience to inform your thoughts and action as you move forward. By using shamanic journey as a tool for self-discovery and personal growth, individuals can gain greater clarity, insight, and meaning in their lives as with any spiritual practice. Regular journeying can enhance one's connection to their spirit guides, deepen their understanding of their self, the self, and the universe, ultimately lead to greater spiritual fulfillment. Okay. As we delve into the world of shamanic journey, some may wonder why this practice is worth pursuing. What are the benefits? What can it offer? These questions may arise, but fear not. The answers lie ahead as we explore the many reasons why shamanic journey is a powerful transformative tool for personal growth and spiritual exploration. Through connecting with the unseen realms, we can tap into our inner wisdom, find guidance, support from spiritual allies, and cultivate a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Okay, so let's look at this relaxation, healing and self-discovery, connect with nature, increase creativity, intuition, enhance emotional regulation, improve mental clarity, heighten spiritual awareness, 
So these are the benefits of doing shamanic journey. This is just a big, they may call it creative visualization, whatever you want to call it, but this is the basic foundation. This is the oldest healing modality and the oldest way to communicate with your ancestors and your spirit guides. Okay, so we show where it can help you. Now, I want to dive in a little more. I want to go over this book to path working because that's initially what path working is. It's what path working is. It is a shamanic journey that you have and you are intentionally going on to visit that realm. It takes a lot of uh, purposeful, intentional, visualization. Once you got that set up in your mind, you can start doing successful path working. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. This doesn't go into the details of the upper world. Here we go. Here we go. This is going to talk about the lower world. The lower world, uh, because it, when you start seeing it, the world as the big tree. It's a big tree. That's why you have the tree of life. Okay? And so when you go up this tree or down this tree, you go into different worlds. And with the lower world, you can enter and see your spirit guides. You can go in there for healing. You'll see your power animal. And then you'll have the middle world. Now, the middle world is very intriguing because you can also see the future when you go into the middle world. That is the world where you can see everything that's happening now, uh, where you can make changes and tap into your magic. That's basically where the middle world is. Now, the lower world is where you can pull back a lot of ancient information and learn a lot of things that's already written in the lower world. The middle world is where you can find make a lot of changes. You can go in and kind of see things. And then the upper world is where you will come in contact with those angelic beings. Like I've already discussed here. And see, after completing a, a journey, it's important to take time and process and integrate the insights to understand and internalize any message received during the journey. This can be done through a variety of methods such as meditation, reflection, a discussion with others, or journaling. Okay, so you want to journal. You want to keep a track of those things. Preparing for the journey involves setting clear intentions, cleansing, grounding yourself, and creating a sacred space for the journey to take place. It's crucial to approach the journey from a place of openness and trust. So allow yourself for it to happen. Allow yourself to let go and let it happen. That's, that, that was my main thing, trying to uh, control it. I had I already had the scripts in my mind of how I should look. I just needed to stick to that and let my spirit guides take me there and once I allowed it to just happen just let go your mind will start these scenarios you'll start opening up you'll start seeing these scenes and you'll just let go and this information will start to flow and as it flow it becomes more clear and make more sense you can journal on that and test the information allows oneself to surrender to the experience you have to surrender and let go now, one of my favorite meditations, and is an example of that, is the ancestral med alignment meditation that I created there. People are able to let go and let that experience happen. 
And that was very intentional meditation. I wanted it that way because I wanted you to have that experience because I had that experience. And see how I have shared that path working with you. Now we all have the same path working. It'll be amazing. And, and most of the people that did the path working, we had some of the similar experiences. This is the real work, you guys. This is the real work. But I'm going to go in the path working a lot more. We're going to be talking about this uh, probably uh, for a few more days, you know, a couple of days. But I want you to really understand what path working is and how to communicate with your ancestors. You want to learn how to communicate with spirits. You want to learn how to get these messages for yourself. You want to learn how it's done. How did our ancestors do it? This is how they did it. You'll have to keep, and sometimes, some people have to go into an altered state of consciousness to surrender. And that's when they reach out to psychedelic assistance. And sometimes our ancestors used psychedelic assistance when they were going into these realms. Again, this is an altered state of consciousness they were going into. So let me go over here to uh, talk about path working for a little bit. Uh, like, they, see, we're talking about it again. I, look, I was getting ready to jump off here. What is an altered state of consciousness? Often through techniques such as meditation, hypnosis, or the use of psychoactive substance. Okay, here they just talk about going to the lower world. They didn't talk about the upper world on here. But they did hit some of the points because I've been doing this for a while and I know it works. I know it works. Uh, but it's not a lot covered on here. I haven't seen a lot of people cover a lot about that. But getting back to doing hoodoo and connecting with uh, ancestors, you're basically doing shamanic work. That's what it is. Okay, so let's jump into path working and I'll, that is a uh, you know, now they've changed the name to path working. But let, let, uh, let's jump in there. Okay, so now we're going to talk about path working. I've talked about this book and shared this book with you uh, before. So, but now you get a chance to actually see what's in the book here today. So, this is the Anisha's book of path working. The bridge of dreams. All this is consciousness. You see that? I like the way she wrote this book in a way where the reader, you, we, could really understand the workings of shamanic work and path working and how it, how we can develop it and tweak it for our needs so I like this and the way she described it in here uh, is basically a virtual reality remember we said we're in a matrix a computer a big matrix of big virtual reality and she kind of explains that uh, in the introduction of this book I like look she has the onk here and she has some Egyptian path workings in here as well I've used some of them in some of the meditations that I have created. Now, at the beginning of this book, you see she has several path workings here. The Egyptian path working. She has the Greek path working. She has the Alexandria path working. The Greco Egyptian path working. The Celtic path working. Path working of craft and fairy face. Angelic path working. Elemental path working. Shamanic path working, miscellaneous 
path working. Path working for the new millennials. So she has an extensive uh, path working in this book. It's only a few I used here. But I want to read this beginning to you because I think it's, it, it is uh, worth, worth talking about. You know, I, want, I don't want to read the whole, you know, keep you here a long time and read stuff that doesn't apply. In this book, you will find magical doorways leading to Egypt, Greece, Celtia, Alexandria, and the Tree of Life, angelic and elemental worlds, as we, as well as craft fairy fae. Those who follow the old ways will find the path to delight and intrigue them. She said this is the old way. Again, these are shamanic practices that she has put, used her visualizations that she's put in here to help you do the working. We have also included some shamanic working and a few that have no real tradition, but which fit into most of the others somewhere along the line. In the final section, you will find three path workers written for the new millennial, which we've already went through that. The concept of path working is well known that it needs little in the way of expect explanation. But for those entering the astral world, for the first time, a little help may not be not be missed, be a miss. It is essential for anyone new to this ancient method of training to remain free from interruption. So when you're going through journey work, um, my rule of thumb is to I don't want to be disturbed for at least 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. You don't want any interrupt because you're going into another realm. And so if you're interrupted, that can knock your equilibrium off. Most path working run for 20 minutes or so, just like I said. Those more complicated can take up to an hour. Freedom from noise, a darkened room, and privacy are all help in the mind to focus on the work at hand. Because this is hand. This is work. Putting those visualizations together, being able to focus on the visualizations, and making that experience as real as possible for you so you can get the best benefits from it. A sudden interruption brings you back to the physical level too quickly for your mind to adjust itself smoothly. This can lead to headaches or racing pulse, raised blood pressure, profuse sweating, or disorientation. Like I said, it can knock your equilibrium off if you're having someone to disturb you when you're going into these um, states of consciousness, where you're going into these astral realms. So take the phone off the hook or arrange for someone else to answer it. Allow yourself time to relax and be comfortable. You know, choose a chair with the firm back and place a small cushion under your feet and raise them from the floor. This takes the pressure off your arteries behind your knees, preventing cramping and numbness. Don't lie down or you may fall asleep before you start the path working. For me, I get in the most comfortable position for me. So if that's lying down, I do that because I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to surrender as much as I can. Now, if you think you're going to fall asleep, then don't do that. But if you know you're going to fall asleep, find the most sitting, comfortable position you can. You want to be as comfortable as you can when you go in there. Uh, and you can also take in, astrally take in things like, you can have your crystal next to you. You can have your staff next to you. Uh, you can have your uh, your dagger next to you. Whatever you think that you're going to need in the astral world, you can take those things in with you. And of course, always take your spirit guides with you. You need to have a guide if you're going into travel into those other worlds. You don't go in there alone. You always go with the spirit guide. Okay. What is path working? It is similar to a virtual reality trip. 
subvert your reality that you're creating in your man, mind. Past working are perfectly natural and can occur spontaneously in the form of daydreams. Now this happened to me when I wanted to visit the upper world and go talk to those elevated ancestors. I remember talking to the ancestors about it and I had a spontaneous, a spontaneous trip there by a song, a song played in the radio and instantly it took my mind there. And that was during the time I was talking about it and I had listened to that song more than a dozen times and I never looked at it from that perspective until I started asking the ancestors about it. And when that song played, my mind, it just like it triggered that. It triggered that and I was there. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm having, a, this is happening now. And it's just like, yeah, this is happening now. But that song triggered that experience. So you'll have songs too can trigger an experience. Use all of that. If those songs is going to help you get there, a particular song, a, a, a sound, a object, use all of that to help you get to that astral plane. Okay? Some people may find it impossible to visualize scenes in the mind. They may find path working difficult in the usual sense, but may find it easier to direct mind towards feelings rather than pictures. You have some people like that too. You'll just feel things. You may not see things, but trust the process. And the more you go there and the more you read about this, you know, read about your visualization. Uh, another good movie to watch that that is good for this is the movie Jumpers. Remember when he looked at in the movie Jumpers and he was looking at these um, he was looking at these magazines and stuff like this to help him jump to a certain place. You can also do that too when you're doing path work and shamanic work. If you're having problems visualizing going to that place, you can also get pictures and start visualizing yourself in that place and go there. Okay, these are ways that you can work with your mind. You know, TV has really messed up our mind, too, when it comes to uh, imagination. But I find that you can get the pictures, just like a vision board, you can go there. Within the mind of every human being is a cosmos that matches the physical cosmos which surround us, Adam, for Adam. So it's in what's outside of you is inside of you as well. We can use the rap power of the brain and the richness of its data bank to combine the two into an internal holodeck sequence to use a Star Trek analogy. She's using a Star Trek analogy to help you. But this is the same thing with virtual reality, you guys. This is the same exact thing when we're talking about virtual reality. With practice and training, these mental workings can be as real as actual things. You're, you're seeing it here. With experience, you can use anything, a book, a film, a myth, or an actual event. Ritual is, is as uplifting when done in the mind as when done in the body. In fact, this is where the rituals of future will be done. Why build a physical temple, temple when you can have a mental one set up and ready to go at a moment's notice inside of you in your imagination. Who's been going there? Who's been meditating? Who's been building their temple, their inner temple? How does your inner temple look? A path worker gives access to a multiverse. You want to learn how to ac access the multiverse? This is it right there. The multiverse is inside of you and outside of you. In contact with great minds of the past. You can walk through the centuries at will to be present at moments that have changed history. All you need are visualization skills to feed your imagination with data. That's all you need. You are a computer. You are, you know, your biological unit can do that. Your mind can do that. If you have ever seen an Egyptian temple, you cannot easily bring it in it to mind. If you have never stood inside an 11th century castle or climbed steps 
to a massive wooden door with the iron hinge two feet across, it is hard to imagine what it is really like. In such cases, look for pictures to feed your imagination. Read authors what they give for a descriptive prose and work from their words and images. Authors like H. Ryder Haggard, Joseph Conrad Catherine, Kurtz, Catherine Kurtz, Charles D. Lentz, Anne McCaffrey, Jules Verne, Gail Bodone, Bodino, J. H. Brennan, Alan Richardson, Terry Pratchett, Inventive Minds off uh, Inventive Minds offers wonderful mind pictures. Gather data from all around to fill the library of your mind with images. Okay? That's why I say you're going to start from there when it comes to contacting your ancestors, working with your ancestors, working with uh, those spirits. Again, they are inside of you. You're going to go to the astral plane, which is the safest plane where you to work from them at and start, start uh, working on your intuition, start working on your visualization, your mediumship skills. That's what this all, this is what this is. Observation is the key word. Look around and observe objects, places, views that can be useful to you in path working. Read books, look at paintings and pictures, subscribe, subscribe to magazines like the National Geographic, Arizona Highways in the United States, and English Heritage in United Kingdom. I'll offer wonderful pictures to use as basic imagery. Raid the local library for oversized travel and hist history books. Learn to project your consciousness into the picture. And in time, you will be able to build astral scenery with a paranormal three-dimensional viewpoint. Remember, the path workings of today are the holodeck programs of the future. That's what we see when we see virtual reality. Okay, they have explained that there to you what path workings is. I want you to have a brief description of what path working is and before I moved on to this other book, which is going to be very juicy and provide a lot of path working information there for you. But I want to give you an introduction to shamanic uh practices and path working before we even jumped into this book because this other book is going to provide some very insightful information for you okay all right i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gave you some insight uh and uh chime in and tell me what you think in the comments of the things that i've shared here you know, did it make sense to you what we talked about today? Okay. Thanks for being here. Like, love, namaste. I say love one.